And now we look ahead to the Diamond Jubilee Stakes, named in honour of Her Majesty the Queen. And this year, we welcome to our shores the Australian superstar, Black Caviar. She's a six-year-old who's raced 21 times, and she's won 21 times. We've all heard how brilliant she is. We're going to see it for ourselves. But if you were coming over as part of the Black Caviar team, Lydia, what would be your concerns? They don't seem to be displaying any kind of concern whatsoever, do they? They seem to be very, very confident, and you can understand why, given her record. I suppose my major concern would be that she's doing something she's never done before. She's travelling around half the globe. She's taking on a different set of circumstances, not just in the race itself, but in the run-up to the race, the training. It's a different set of horses. So there's a whole load of unknowns. That said, her compatriots have come here and done it before, and she is said to be the best of them ever. So yeah. why should they be concerned? I suspect if she runs to her Australian form, she really ought to win. She does. I mean, yeah, she's one of the excitements of the whole meeting, isn't it? Uh, the, the prospect of seeing her. She does look fantastic. You and look her... thrilled, by the way. You look so I excited. Am, I am thrilled. <laughs> this, is, this is me being thrilled. She's, <laughs> she's as, you know, she is, she seems to be all that they claim. I mean, 21 from 21, 11 group ones. Yeah. And every time I see her on television, it looks to be the same race every time in terms of she absolutely wins without being fully extended. So if she reproduces that form, I'm sure she'll win. As you pointed out, the, the worries, they just are. They're, they're, they're travelling and different set of circumstances. But that aside, you know, it, she should really win, obviously. But she's got her cool superhero like suit on as well for the travelling. Yes. It is it, tremendously exciting to see, it, see her here. I mean, in all seriousness, yeah. it adds a massive dimension to the meeting. She is possibly the m the most exciting international runner I think I have I have ever encountered hmm. in the entire entirety of my racing. Yeah, life. I was going to say uh, we've had horses visit these shores before, but I can't remember people being as excited about seeing a horse come from abroad as they have been about her. We've all been watching YouTube, haven't we? We've seen the devastation of her performances and we want to see it for ourselves. We spent too much time wondering whether her and Frank will meet. I mean, I'm, I'm personally I've never been bothered about that. I just want to see you know, a great horse start the meeting and a great horse finish the meeting. That'll do me. Yeah, well, if she does win the Diamond Jubilee Stakes, she will have to overcome some significant opposition. Let's talk about Moonlight Cloud, a horse who is a Group 1 filly. Uh, Steve, I know that you were impressed with the performance she put up in France last year against a decent field. Yeah, in the pre de Guise, I think that was the best performance put up by a European sprinter last year. Personally, she beat Society Rock by four lengths easily. Um, we saw her on British Champions Day in the, in the sprint and she ran, I thought she was unfortunate, she, she met what trouble there was and she didn't get a chance to show her her full merit, whether she would have won or not, I don't know, but she would have gone an awful lot closer. And she started this career, sorry, this season, with a really easy win on her reappearance. She's, she looks every bit as good as ever, six, seven furlongs, it doesn't matter to her. She seems to have gone any ground, but if there is a rain in the build-up, that won't do her any harm. I think she's the main threat. Mick Easterby is represented by Hoofit, a horse who had a growing reputation last year. Um, is that reputation still intact? Just, yeah, I think it is, really. I think he's better over six furlongs than he is over five. My doubt would be that he didn't run very well in the Wokingham last year. Now, it was yeah. soft ground, but he does tend to handle soft ground, and some horses just don't go here at Ascot. And in the back of my mind, I'll be worry, worried whether Hoofit is one of those. Last year's winner of this race, when it was known as the Golden Jubilee, was Society Rock, a horse who, on the face of it, has a very good record here at Ascot, bar one question mark. Yeah, he didn't run so well in the, on British Champions Day in the sprint, did he? Um, apart from that, he's got a banging record here over the course and distance, winning last year, second the year before to Star Spangled Banner. If he put, rolls up with his A game, I think he's going to be a contender, but beatable. Well, I'm loath to tip against Black Caviar. I expect that she'll win, but I hope that Moonlight Cloud shows her best form here when she turns up in the Diamond Jubilee Stakes, and at least it'll give some substance to what Black Caviar does or doesn't do. I feel exactly the same way, really. I expect Black Caviar to win, and I think she'll win impressively. However, from a betting angle, I think because of her presence in the race, that Moonlight Cloud is too big a price. The head says Black Caviar, and I think she'll probably win pretty comfortably, but uh, my punting head says Moonlight Cloud each way. I think she's the best European sprinter, and I think she's probably the each-way alternative against uh, a very likely winner.